Hi everyone, this is Facundo Molina, I'm a PhD student from University of Rio Cuarto in Argentina, and here I'm going to present EvoSpecs, an evolutionary algorithm for learning post conditions. So to start, let me describe a typical automated analysis scenario. Usually, when we want to analyze our programs, we use some program analysis tool that provides us with uh, some feedback on the behavior of our programs. And when we incorporate a specification of the intended behavior, the analysis can be considerably improved, allowing us to catch more bugs or to have better guarantees of the behavior of our programs. But unfortunately, specifications are often unavailable, and this emphasizes the relevance of the Oracle problem, which is the challenge of distinguishing between expected and unexpected software behavior. There are many approaches that one may take to the Oracle problem. One is the use of manual specifications describing the intended behavior of the software. Another one is to try to analyze the software in order to find uh, general software faults, such as unexpected exceptions. And another one is to try to derive specifications from existing software elements, such as previous versions of the software. Our work focuses in this last approach to the Oracle problem, and more precisely, in a particular type of oracles called post-condition assertions. The term post-condition dates back to the work of Hoare that introduced this notation to analyze program correctness and defined the post-condition as an assertion that holds after every legal execution of program S. So for example, if we have an implementation of, let's say, an ABL tree, and we also have a routine for insert elements into the tree, a good post-condition assertion for method add should check that the resulting ABL is still a, ABL, a valid ABL, that is, the representation invariant is preserved, that the element that we were trying to insert was effectively inserted into the tree, and that all previous elements in the ABL are still there. So our idea here is to derive a post-condition assertion capturing the method's current behavior. So the current behavior is considered valid, and any other behavior is considered invalid. So in order to derive a post-condition assertion, we should consider all the possible executions of the method, the valid ones and the invalid ones. And among the postconditions that one may consider, we have many. Uh, one may be true, that captures all the executions, false, that captures no execution at all, and the one that we expect to, to, to have is the one that captures the valid executions while rejecting the invalid executions. So our idea here is to use an evolutionary algorithm that searches uh, for such a post condition. Essentially, our technique uh, has two phases. One is a generation phase that uses degeneration and state mutations in order to produce the valid and invalid executions. And a learning phase that essentially uses an evolutionary algorithm to search for a post condition that captures the valid executions while rejecting the invalid ones. So, the generation phase has as a goal generating valid and invalid method executions. To do so, we take the method under analysis and they use a test generation technique that provides us with a test suite from which we take the valid executions. And more precisely, these executions are represented as state pairs, where the first, comp the first component represents the state before executing the target method, and the second component represents the state after executing the target method. From there, we use a state mutation technique that allows us to build the invalid executions by mutating the post-states of valid executions. And more precisely, this mutation essentially takes the value of a variable and replaces it by a random value of the corresponding type. Then, in the learning phase, the goal is to produce a post-condition assertion that accepts every valid method execution and rejects every invalid one. So what we do here what we did here was to implement a classic genetic algorithm that evolves a population of candidate postconditions by using uh, classical genetic operators such as mutation and crossover that allow us to explore the search space of candidate postconditions until we find the desired postcondition or we met some stop criterion. The search space explored by our algorithm is composed of logical expressions built using a JML-like language. What we do is to use uh, navigation and literals to build expressions, denoting primitive types, that are, de that are then used to build logical expressions involving negation, numeric comparisons, pre- and post-state comparisons. We also use uh, navigation and reachability to build expressions denoting non-primitive types that are then used to 
create logical expressions involving null checking, pre and post state comparisons, quantification expressions. And also we combine expressions from these two worlds to build more complex ones involving cardinality, membership, quantification, and so on. And these are essentially the building blocks of uh, our post conditions. Another important aspect of our algorithm is the fitness function, how we evaluate how good is a candidate a post condition assertion. At a certain point during evolution, a post condition assertion may accept some valid executions, but not all of them, and may reject some invalid ex executions, but not all of them. So what we do here is to compute the set of executions that are incorrectly rejected by the assertion and the set of executions that are incorrectly accepted by the assertion. And then we compute the fitness value by using this formula. And the algorithm's goal is to maximize the value of such a formula. And the way of doing so is to minimize the amount of executions that are in the gray area and to maximize uh, this reward that is essentially a fraction related to the assertion length. In order to evaluate our technique, we focused on two research questions. The first one uh, related to the deficiencies of the oracles produced by our technique compared with related tools, and also in the ability of our approach to reproduce manually written contracts. So in the first case, we need to define what are oracle deficiencies. So for a post condition, an oracle deficiency may be a false positive, that is a program state reachable after executing the method that is correct, but the assertion rejects. Or it may be a false negative, that is a reachable program state after executing the method that is incorrect, but the assertion accepts. And what we did here was to infer post condition for 200 methods taken from 16 projects of the SF110 benchmark and inferred post conditions using our technique and the well-known uh, invariant detector DICON. And then we searched for evidence of false positives or, or false negatives on the inferred assertions using an oracle assessor called uh, OASIS. And these are the, um, the numbers that we found. And essentially the takeaway here is that Ibo specs produces more precise post conditions with fewer assertions compared with DICON and that the post condition of both tools still allows uh, false negatives which suggests that the um, post conditions can still be uh, improved. Then in the second experiment, since our technique derives the post conditions from the program behavior in order to analyze the reproduction of manually written contracts, we needed programs that were correct with respect to a manually provided specification. Thus, we took some classes from a verification context in which the programs had already been proved correct with respect to the specification, and from a synthesis context in which the programs were derived from an abstract uh, specification. Then we uh, used if specs to produce post conditions for these programs and then compare which properties of the original specification were present in the, man in the inferred post conditions. And in these cases, our algorithm was able to reproduce uh, a set of rich uh, contracts. For example, the correct addition of elements into uh, NARE tree, also the correct uh, counting, addition or removal of uh, keys and data from a map structure. In the synthesis cases, our technique was able to capture uh, contracts such as the addition, uh, the correct addition of elements into one bag or another, also to assert the, um, that the method properly finds the, the minimum in a bag. And in summary, Ibuspecs was able to reproduce 50% of manually written contracts, and for 74% of the analyzed methods, Ibuspec reproduced at least one complex post condition. So to finish, let me highlight some remarks. The Oracle problem is a relevant problem in software engineering. Derived oracles are specifications that can be obtained from existing software elements. Evolutionary algorithm can effectively derive oracles from program behaviors, as evidenced by Evo specs and other uh, recent work. And that Evo specs can find can capture sophisticated and interpretable properties for class implementations. Thank you very much for listening. So, welcome to the live part 
of the session. We are, if you remember, in the session programming, general issues, and we just saw the video presentation of Evo Specs and Evolutionary Algorithm for Learning Post Conditions. We have here one of the authors, which is Facundo. He's from the University of Rio Cuarto and Cocinet in Argentina. And my name is Gregorio Robles. I'm the session chair. I'm from the Universidad Rey Juan Carlos here in Madrid, Spain. So um, I see lot of, lots of clapping. So people like the, your presentation, Facundo. Well done. Okay. So we, if, you, you. if you have questions, you know where the chat is. Andreas has already put a first question, so let's go for it. So um, what he's asking is, how does your work compare against the um, against gamma test from ESTA to, to uh, 2010, which is, you know, it's, that's another combination of EvoSuite and mutations to refer test cases and oracles. So. Uh, okay, let me see the question. Another combination of mutations to infer test cases and oracles. Okay, great. Uh, I think that um, the post conditions that we learn are uh, more general, right? For uh, more general in the sense that they can be used in any test that uh, is uh, invoking our method, uh, the, the method for which we learn the post conditions. And um, I think that they could be used for tests too, but maybe uh, they are not going to be so strong uh, and too specific as the properties learned by this uh, new test work at uh, ISTA 2010. That's, okay. that's it. Okay, thank you. We have another question from Marike. Um, yes. no, and she, what she says is, it seems your approach does not generate properties about state being unchanged. Would it be possible to generate post conditions in separation logic? So you could capture this? Uh, actually, uh, some, I mean, uh, some properties do, do express that kind of, uh, state being, uh, unchanged. I mean, like, uh, uh, because it depends on the mutation that we have, right? If we have, um, let's say you mutate, uh, some, some field, right? Uh, with, with a value previously unseen and that, that field was not supposed to change, uh, our algorithm can uh, produce a property that will capture that. I mean, that the, that field should not have been changed. And uh, secondly, is if it will be possible to generate post condition in separation log logic, I think yes, but we should have like a, to work on the, um, let's say on the, on the, on the language that uh, we use to, to produce the post conditions and, and to include this kind of logic and then uh, allow the algorithm to search for post condition in, in, that, in, in that specific logic. Okay, so uh, while other attendants write their questions in the, in the chat, ah, we have one from Ari. So, what he says is, it seems you use a single fitness function encoding multiple objectives. Did you consider turning turning this into modules, you know, into multiple competing fitness functions? Okay, uh, thank you. And um, actually, uh, th that's true. I mean, we use like a single fitness function and uh, we didn't try to use uh, some other kind of algorithms encoding like a multi-objective uh, functions or like a co-evolutionary stuff and that kind of things. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it would be a, a different line. Um, I mean, a, an interesting line of uh, future work, trying those kind of algorithms. Okay, thank you. You're so, welcome. Um, uh, I always make this question because I'm uh, uh, concerned with the uh, replication and reproducibility and so on. So EvoSpex, mm -hmm. is it available as a tool? Can somebody? Uh, I mean, we have a, yeah, uh, yeah. We, we have make available um, the replication package of our of our algorithm, so you can reproduce our our experiments. But actually, the the tool is like a prototype. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's not that user friendly, and it's not something that you can just download and run it. You know, and uh, but we are working on that on, on making uh, available uh, soon. Okay, that's but yeah, I mean, e everything that we did on the paper is is public available. Okay, fantastic. And I think that's fair enough. We don't need that all papers create tools. 
Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. the, the important thing is that they go in that direction, that they have a prototype. And if you keep on working on that, then maybe mm -hmm. something more mature comes out of, of that. And you have a tool and, and uh, other fellow researchers can use it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. So what, if we talk about the future, what are the next steps that you envision? Uh, okay, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, I think that uh, we should like uh, try and, uh, on one side, uh, being like uh, taking the language and making it like a more powerful, you know, uh, adding some uh, new properties that currently we can't handle. Uh, that will be one direction. Uh, another would be trying to capture, uh, I mean, actually we are capturing like a uh, local state of of the of the method i mean local state uh, regarding the the current class under analysis and uh, extending those states to capture things that may happen outside of the methods would be also a, an interesting uh, direction uh, and also one that i think that is most important is analyzing like uh, the the test generation technique you know the, the impact that the test generation may have on not only in our tools but also other tools that may that may use like a test suites to to observe the behavior of the program and then infer stuff from there. Analyzing different test suites would be a, an interesting line of work. Yeah, uh, I think so there is another question. There's another question that goes mm -hmm. into this direction. I mean, Arie asks if you if you have considered using unit test assertions as inspiration for your post conditions. I mean, uh, no, he says that unit unit test assertions would be the seed of. Uh, yeah. Of your method, so I think that in certain sense, yes, uh, because I mean, what we did is is to create like a the, um, uh, I mean, le le let me let me think about this question because I, I, I'm not sure if I'm answering like a, the the right thing. Uh, so, if um, do you take unit test assertions in in the current method? Now, in Evospecs, do you, you do you look at the unit test assertions? And uh, uh, out of I mean, one? in certain sense, yes, because I mean, our assertions are like a, like a equalities, inequalities, and that kind of things, but uh, and also more complex ones, right? But uh, they are like uh, assertions that capture the behavior of the methods. I mean, it's essentially that, but I I'm not sure if I am answering. Maybe we can discuss that uh, later. OK, so that, that's something maybe Ari wants to follow uh, up on after mm -hmm. the Q&A. So as, as you know, oh, well, he, he's writing then in the, no? In, in the chat, what he means, yeah, I think yeah, that's that's about no the the unit tests they compare uh, no uh, they compare against specific values, and then uh, there's the problem there of generalization. No, and that, that's uh, that, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I think I think actually we use that kind of assertions as like a, the initial population for for our algorithm, and then we generalize from there, and we I mean we hope generalizing by applying mutation. And exploring the search space. I, okay. I think that that's more precise. Uh, answer. Yeah, sounds, sounds reasonable. So, the, so you use unit test as a you know, as a starting point, then generalize it. And yeah, then, yeah. Because then, actually, like a, we we create like a pool of uh, of expressions. Let's say that we can evaluate. Then we evaluate them in some of the states that we produced before. And then we use like a, that, those equalities, inequalities as a starting point for our, for our algorithm. Okay, fantastic. So we have still time for a last minute question, really a half minute question because <laughs> we are running out of time. As, as you know, this session will end here. This is the last paper of the session. Once the session is finished, you will get a pop up there in the above the chat with a button and then you can go to the discussion room and talk to to Facundo who will be there and yeah I hope to see you there so thanks everybody for joining and have a nice ICSI thank you